Hello everyone, I'm Havoc, and this is Satisfactory. We are back in yet again. You might notice there are some things. <laughs> Giant presents. It's a christmas -y event. That is not properly seated on that. <laughs> Do you see the way that rotates? Okay, well, that's interesting. <clears throat> I am playing the experimental build. I mean, I don't know that that would really affect that hat not seating there properly. Um, but yes, we're back into Satisfactory. I've been out for a little bit. You'll have to bear with me. I still have a bit of a cough and raspy voice I'm trying to record. Hopefully it works out well. If it does, you'll see this episode. If not, then, um, yeah, then you won't know this happened. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, my son got sick and then, uh, he immediately got me sick because that's how that works. When little ones don't feel well, they want to waller all over daddy and cough in daddy's face and, uh, even taking medicine, uh, it, it doesn't help when you've got a germ factory all over you. <laughs> but let me show off this because this is new. I keep staring at it and, and, uh, you, you guys might be wondering, where is this? Where did this come from? So. This is the beginning of the, um, I don't know what you would call it, the grab it factory, the, the, the factory that's going to make all of my items that are just going to go straight to storage. That way I can run and grab screws, rods, plates, blah, 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 whatever I need, you know, those sort of things, probably frames, reinforced plates, maybe even some rotors. I'm not sure. It doesn't have to be fast. It just needs to run and it will go to the storage room. We're going to build right over there. Look at these presents. They're just falling everywhere. It's littering over here. Let's, let's pick these things up. I think they are useful. I've never actually done the Christmas time event, whatever they call this fix miss event. That's, that's hilarious. <clears throat> yeah, so <laughs> I've never actually done the Fixmas event before, so this is very new and interesting to me. What does this give us? Fixmas gifts. Um, interesting. So let me show off this. So I, I spent a lot of time working on this. I was able to do some playing while not feeling well, I just couldn't record because I could not talk without coughing constantly. So I did a little bit of playing and I came up with this setup here. You have, I'm using the signs and they're staggered just a hair so you can have that backdrop on it with the uh, caution, the yellow and black, which is animated. Absolutely awesome. The fact that it links up between the screens. It's also, it looks like it's bigger on the bottom than it is on the top. And that's just because of my proximity to it. We're closer to the bottom, so we see more of it. But it should be evenly spaced. If I go up there, the top will look bigger. But if I back up, you'll start to see they are the same size amount of, same amount of the screen showing either side. It just looks a little goofy when you get closer. But I really love the signs. I played around with them just a little bit. This is the entryway. I have a little, um, <clears throat> not a foyer, I don't know what you call it, lobby, there you go, a lobby here with a crafting table, a ma'am, and some signs, a little bit of storage, and then through here you have smelting. So if you go through the door, you'll see I use this really neat trick here. I have smelting set for uh, 270 iron per minute coming in here because that's what I can currently get out of that miner. And you'll see each of these already have everything set up. I ran these beams through here inside of the uh, room but below the ceiling and I've hooked up the power right above each of the machines. in order to uh, make it kind of neat and organized. And I use these ceiling lights in here and I could prop, uh, <laughs> hook up power to them very easily that way. And everything runs seamlessly through here. And I thought this looks great the way it is. I added in some different kind of 
mirror or mirrors <laughs> windows so you'll notice over here it's just the big open window and then I tapered it at the ends with these angles to make this one section to the front very open and visible and then on the side I used uh, slanted walls and inverted slanted walls to do some interesting design like that where they uh, are angled but not connected all then over here I just have an open window so you get a little light in and you'll be able to see the storage building when it goes up over there but here I stopped because I have the split off that goes into this room this room is just making screws and I have a single constructor in here running off of the uh, what is this called alternate cast screw there it is the recipe name is right up there but it just runs straight off of the iron ingots and makes screws and in order to properly consume 30 iron per minute I had to add in a few of these uh, power shards and then ramp it down so it produces 120 screws per minute and that will consume exactly 30 iron ingots per minute and I do know that increases the power consumption however it's a single machine and I felt like that was acceptable for this one machine to use a little bit more power that way I can make use of this room tidily tidy I don't know of a good, <laughs> a good way to express that uh, to keep it from being crowded in here so I had two constructors in here originally and I was throttling or no I didn't throttle them even the two of them together was not enough so I thought hey you know what if I come in here see because it's at 240 percent speed if I use one machine and clock it up I can get it to just where I want it and then the screws will just go out here and I'll figure out how I'm going to go across there look the presents are just falling everywhere we're going to need to clean those up eventually but if you come out here I've got a hyper tube in the wall because eventually that's going to take you to other floors. There's also stairs right out here. And I use this little trick. So if you come through here and you zoop these little walls up, you can build way up through there. And then what you can do is you can come back in and get rid of the ones you don't need like these. Four I didn't need and then those three I didn't need and that allows you to get these little walls that are essentially rails for the stairs so you can't fall off it is fair enough. you can fall off if you jump but you don't just walk off okay well I did then because I had already jumped and landed on it if I walk up here there you see <laughs> it stops you it prevents you from going off oh, I didn't realize you could see that in here hmm I might put a sign there that is from another little thing that I figured out while messing around with this I've been trying to come up with ingenious ways to have the lighting look better so I wanted the lights to be on this area so I kept playing with them and no matter what I did I tried them at angles so if I come in here I was having them put like right here and then trying to do angles and stuff but you'll see that puts the light way over there or if I come in here and put the light right here the light itself actually sticks out past this and when it was lighting things it wasn't lighting back in this area it was lighting sort of from here out and I didn't like that so I figured out you can take these pillars away and push it back into the wall which also hides the light the wiring for the lights which I love to do back in there and then I use these little metal pillars number one it's hiding the wiring uh, for the lights and it's what I use to put these signs on here but if you noticed I talked about this when I first walked in and then I got distracted this right here is how I'm getting the ore into this building and if you come out of this I need to put a sign up there that says maintenance or something along the lines but you come down under the floor and I'm using this little line that comes in going into splitters and into the floor holes is that what they're called conveyor lift floor holes yes that is 
I used those in order to bring it through this floor and upstairs. That way all of the ore comes in, all of the messy uh, splitting and all of that is happening down here. And all you see upstairs in the main actually smelting floor is the beautiful little tops of the conveyor lifts just popping through the floor and going in. And I absolutely love this. I still use the walkway over it, but what this allows me to do is put these pseudo supports. They don't actually have to support the walkway, but they do uh, visually look like they're supporting it in here. And it doesn't clip through any conveyor belts or any splitters. That allows me to neatly walk between each of the machines and access them. And all of the ore is just collected in mergers all the way around until you get to right here. And like I said, I split off 30 per minute going there. And then the rest will probably go upstairs through a floor hole that I'm going to put right back in here. And then I will bring it over and lift up to that floor hole to take it out of here. That way I can start producing the other items. However, that's what I figured. The Fixmas event is going to have its own little things. I've never done this before. I'm interested in this. And these things, these presents, continuously fall all over the place. So, I think it would be a good idea to go around and do a little bit of collecting of these. giant presents sitting anywhere I think we got them all we also picked up a blue powers look and a hard drive while we were out doing that so it was a pretty fruitful little use of our time there I like it I do want to use the hard drive first and see what we get as a recipe so Go ahead and scan that. Uh, that's only 10 minutes. That's not bad. Let's see what this recipe was. So we have wet concrete. Don't know about that one. We have steel rods, which seems pretty good. One steel makes four rods instead of one iron making one rod ooh but pure iron ingot that seems really good I kind of want to go for that just thinking here can I really make use of that not with the belt speed that I have yet. Right now, it's, it's kind of weird. 65 per minute from a refinery. Taking 7 ore. What in the world was that? I think a present just hit the top of this building or something. <laughs> I think we should probably go with this one. Ah, uh, man. It's tough. I, I would like the steel rods, but I think this one is one I really don't want to up right now I don't think I can make use of it just yet however it seems to be more valuable to me now the game shook it was loud what was that Did a present land nearby there's a present but I don't think that one was close enough to have made that kind of noise <laughs> here we go airdrop coming in oh and you can see I was doing a slight um, difference here I'm trying to think of how to word it exactly this is going to jut out and have some glass on it yeah, it's definitely those things when they land they're very loud they make a bunch of noise let's see about this holiday event this gives you a giant fixmas tree and a fixmas tree branch okay let's go ahead and unlock that 
Giant Fixmas Tree Upgrade 1. Red Fixmas Ornaments, Blue Fixmas Ornaments. That's what it cost. How do you make those? I'm guessing I just unlocked that, possibly. <laughs> Let's run upstairs and grab the present that just landed on top of the building we're working on. Oh yeah, see, I knew one landed on the building while I was in the ma'am down there. They're just coming down like candy. I did have to exit the game and come back in. I was having a lot of lag with the uh, auto saves. And now they seem to be falling like candy after I had collected all of them. Whoa! That's very neat. <laughs> okay, so I'm down here. I've done a little bit of building to the next floor up. And I'm playing around with ideas for how I'm going to bring the resources across this gap over to the storage facility. And I have seen people do this little trick where the conveyor belts travel inside of these, oh boy, what are they called? Just, uh, small frame pillars. And I think that looks cool. I'm going to try that out. It may not be what I keep uh, long term, but it's what I'm going to go with for right now. I'll pop inside and show you what we were working on. Oh, yes, and this. So I got this tree up. It's sitting on a uh, tree skirt, <laughs> a bright red Christmas tree shirt, or uh, excuse me, Fixmas tree skirt here for our Fixmas tree here at uh, Fix It. <laughs> and uh, it appears as though uh, potentially I am not fully updated. I am still playing on the experimental build, as you can see in the top left. And... I think there's supposed to be a calendar event thing somewhere around the hub. I did a little bit of researching on it, and I don't see it here. I thought it's supposed to be, they say, next to the terminal hub on the right over here. And I'm, I may be blind, but I'm not noticing it. I did notice they added lights in here. This is new. This is neat. Uh, interesting. I like it. Uh, but I didn't see a Fixmas calendar anywhere for me to access it and I do believe that is the only way to move forward because <clears throat> if we go down here I need a red Fixmas ornament right here and this unlocks the recipe for it but uh, you, you need one in order to unlock it I've already made the 20 candy canes and I've made the 30 bows but I don't have the red ornament and I've looked it up and it looks like there's supposed to be a calendar right there and the calendar uh, somewhere in this area uh, you access it and on one of the first few days of the event it gives you one of those so I'm uh, kind of like time locked I guess you could say until some time passes and hopefully they realize that's not there in the experimental build yet and there's a hot fix patch that comes out for that um, but hopefully they fix that. It is beautiful. I do want to decorate it, which I think is what you do with those things as you unlock them. But I made this little area for it. It's got its little tree skirt and it's up there. Then I was working on figuring out how I'm going to do stuff up here. And I was thinking about whether or not I should make everything ratio perfect to the point where I perfectly consume 270 iron that's coming in here. Oh, look. <laughs> a present right there the 270 iron that's coming in here but then the thought occurred to me this isn't going to be running 24 7 right so this will be running whenever i run over there and grab a handful of whatever i need iron plates whatnot it will start running one section of this factory will run until it fills up and then it's going to stop so i don't have to worry about making it perfect now, the other thing that I'm thinking about is how I've been doing it right over here is that everything that I make goes into storage, and if I'm not consuming it, it's just sent to the resource sink, which obviously I want to do that still too. So I say it's not all going to be running all the time, but I may have to may have to come up with a smart way to control, maybe like a smart uh, splitter or something to control whether or not I send stuff 
to the resource sink. I don't know. We'll see. There'll be things to figure out with that later on, but I don't think I'm going to worry about making ratios perfect. So what I've done is I've got one constructor that's going to go uh, make us 20 iron plates per minute and just run. I don't use iron plates all that much. Down here, I swapped out where we were making our screws that are only going to be going over there. I took everything out of it so that it is just running at the 50 per minute. I don't need all of the extra. And that also means that I'm not going to use as much iron right here just to make screws until it backs up. So that frees up some resources that I can then use upstairs in order to... Man, I need to get the hypertube <laughs> fixed. Running up those stairs is tedious. Uh, should I just plop it in right here? If I put a wall... You know, I say I should. Why not we go ahead and do it? It's going to be under transportation, wall hole. Now, I just need to take it and... I guess I could have come out here. I didn't need to take the wall down. Oh, that's such a nice, neat little loop there. We need to put an entrance here. And down below. I'm not a big fan of being able to see the wall there. Pretty sure you'll be able to pass through it, but I... I honestly don't really like seeing it. Hmm. Maybe we just do a floor hole. Question is, do you just see the floor through the floor hole? Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't like any of those options. Let's okay. Let's drop down here, put an entrance on this one. Have a tube entrance. We can power it very easily. Okay, so. I powered them up and if you're not next to them it closes and you can't see that the walls there and it only opens up when you're going by I guess I can live with that I would prefer that it remove that area of the wall I mean I understand that the wall is still there so like you see it's highlighted in there but I wish they could do something instead of just putting this over I'm glad it lets you pass through the wall which you normally cannot do but I wish it also removed that. That, that would be a nice uh, little feature. Maybe cuts a hole in the wall when you put that in. I don't know how hard that would be for coffee stain. It would be a wonderful feature that I would very much so appreciate. But here's what we have going on. Gotten all distracted and by that little project. But anyways, coming up here, I'm going to set up I hope that I can do essentially each floor is an item. So, well, to an extent, right? So obviously for one simple item like the, say the rods or the screws or the plates here, I'm just going to have one constructor make them and send them off. And that should be fine. Maybe two for the rods because it only produces what, 15 per minute, which is not a whole lot. But I don't know. I, really, I don't use that many rods at this point compared to earlier in the game. You use rods to make other things and I already have other things being made. There's another present sitting over there. It keeps distracting me. It does seem like those presents slow down drastically after the initial login, though. Anyways. <laughs> All distractions aside. Uh, oh, yes, that's a glass wall. This floor, uh, say... What I'm thinking is, maybe I do plates on this floor. And I've got two different recipes for plates. This one makes 5.62 per minute, which is kind of a very strange order. It also requires copper, which I'm not bringing into this building. This is going to be a simpler build. So that means that I have to go with the regular <laughs> one. 
The only thing here is that it's a lot of screws. So looking at this, I want to make quite a few of these, at least like three of these machines. If I do three of these, that means I'm going to require 180 screws. And if my machines make 50 screws a minute, that means that I need four machines making screws. Straight from the plate though, which is nice, or straight from the ingots. So it goes ingots to screws, four constructors. But then if I'm going to do three of these, I need, what is that, 90 plates per minute, which is an odd number because the plates per minute turn into 20. So if I come up here, if I say, okay, well, simply let's do four of these at 20 per minute. Then you're talking about even more screws. And I don't know if I'll have enough room on this floor. Now, what I could do on this floor is make these, um, these materials. So that, that would be what 120 plate, which is six constructors. And then you're talking about 240 screws which is going to be five constructors at 50 a piece and you'll have 10 remaining. So you're talking about 11 constructors that would probably fill this floor up. I mean, you're, you're talking about a significant amount of room. So that's actually probably what I'll do. I'll dedicate this floor to making all of the sub components that will then maybe move up to the next floor and produce the plates there because then also four assemblers, takes up a significant amount of space. I've got a good bit, but you know, on top of everything else, it won't fit down here. So what I'll do is just do that. But I've been looking at some things. I do want to make use of the trucks and not, not the tractors, actual trucks. And I also noticed when I went into the customizer and looked at materials, they have coated concrete foundation, but it takes plastic. I've also seen in the resource sink shop that they added in let's see customizer materials asphalt foundations and you better believe I want to get these going because I want to use roads and trucks but thinking about that while I've been building I can't even get into trucks yet because trucks let's see are unlocked through oil components and I have not even started oil components yet. I would like to probably at least move into moving items around with trucks and build a road system because I need to automate motors and motors are going to take steel, which I produce over there. They take stators, which I produce over there with, um, what is it called? Caterium, that's what it's called. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I need uh, I need to get items from there over to here combined nearby. That way I can get them to the storage system too. I don't need a ton in the storage system, but I do want to have some over here in the storage system. Now, plastic components. We're going to need to get into oil processing, which I'm not far from the oil at all but I have not looked at what it takes to process the oil yet. Let me grab a few motors out of here. And I think I'm good on the other items. They can stay there. Rubber. It's just going to take crude oil, make rubber, and it also produces heavy oil residue. So. Oh, looking down there, I have a, an alternate recipe. So this can take, make plastic. And then this one can make rubber and it uses the crude oil. What do we have here? Polymer resin. Getting into some complicated things now. Polymer resin and water to make rubber. How do you make polymer resin? 
crude oil, and you make fuel out of it. Oh, okay. All right. So I see what's going on here. I think this is probably the way to go because I can use the fuel inside of power fuel generators. Let's see. I don't actually know if I have those just yet. I do not. What does it take to unlock that? Uh, not a whole lot. Oh, well, I say that. I don't even have computers unlocked yet. This. Okay, so I'll have to do the type of processing that builds up this heavy oil residue. I'll have to make rubber and plastic from crude oil and build up the heavy oil residue and take the heavy oil residue and turn it into petroleum coke, possibly. Uh, this is a less efficient coal replacement or for aluminum refinement. So I can burn this for power, which is probably what I will do to get rid of some of it to begin with. I'll stockpile up a um, container of it and then have the overflow go to some power. Interesting. So we're going to need to go over there and see what are we going to get from our pure oil node that I have. Pure oil node. Oil extractor. Let's turn around face this way. Make 240 cubic meters per minute, and obviously, I could power shard this thing. Wow, it uh, uses a lot of power base, that's gonna make it very expensive. Maybe I don't power shard it, maybe I just take the 240 and see what that takes to process. So, I did have the refinery down, and I could tell you exactly what it takes 30 per minute. For one of these, was it the same for this? It's also 30 per minute. Which means I can half and half this, having four make plastic, four make rubber, and that would make it good to go. Now we'll build, probably want to do it possibly above the water. I know I'm going to need water extractors eventually. So I want to build at a height in which we are over the water extractors. So if I just drop one down, I can build up to above this. That way I can drop water extractors underneath later when they're needed and build a platform just kind of over this water to do our oil processing in. I think that'll work just fine. Then I can pipe it over there. And obviously I have a normal one. Let's see. Should give 120. Yeah. I can't really handle more than 300 in a single pipe. So there's no need in trying to put a whole bunch down. And I'm not going to be massively using this stuff just yet. I just need it to get started and be running so I can unlock milestones. So this is what I've got so far. It's very much so a work in progress, but I'm going for an oil rig style, um, you know, like they have out in the ocean, offshore, whatnot, that it's drilling. I know this one isn't actually drilling the oil, but this is where it's going to be processed. So it's not going to be a structure. It's going to be more of like a platform, maybe some structures on it. Very framey, metallic-y like this. Uh, I, I'll try and put a reference image into the video for you, just of kind of my idea what I'm thinking about with it. Let's head down there. I've got the oil coming in. It's just piping around the land. And then I did a kind of neat organized structure when you get close to the rig itself. Let's get down, hopefully without taking any more damage. Right. So I've got this. I'm using the uh, 
steel frames. What is this actually called? One second. Steel metal beams. The metal beams as a support framework for this. And that's where the oil kind of flows in. It's going to turn and I've set it up so I can add more pipes like a secondary pipe in here if I need it later on and then also I can upgrade these to Mark II eventually at some point in time. But this is currently the only way up. I'll probably do a hyper tube from somewhere uh, eventually from down there to get up here. But the oil comes up very neat organized and then hits the fluid buffer where it will be held this first one just takes it up. There's only one pump. It's not much difference in height to get all the way over to here. When you get to this point, it is uh, so much that you need a pump in order to get it. It's 16 and a half meters, I think, from that pump up, which the max it can handle is 20. So that's fine. It should be good how it is. And then at this height, the oil comes around and goes out here along this framework. And each of the refineries is receiving the oil from this line. And I should have most of these except for the last one set for the recipe. They're all making plastic. And this, so that's 120 of the 240 I have. And then I'm going to need four more that's going to make my rubber. But what I'm going to do is turn this a little bit. I'm thinking about it. Or maybe stagger it and put it at a, a different height because the oil rigs are not one flat surface. They're different heights, they're variations. I'm thinking about maybe putting the storage right down here, having a building in which the outputs, the rubber and the plastic go into that building, and then they're stored there until I can take them out for use elsewhere. Maybe even through floor holes on the bottom with some kind of framework to make it look cool. But this is what I have so far, and I have power running over here. As you see, there's oil in there, so the power is running in. It's going where it needs to go and it's heading in here and setting up everything for us. The only thing I need to do is add power to these and they can start producing. That's what I've got so far and that's my idea for the additional items. Now, I did make sure that this platform is built in such a way that I can fit a water extractor underneath here. Production, water extractor without it clipping. If you get over here, you get kind of the air that it's close. It kind of does in certain areas, but for the most part, you can plop it down, no worries. Where it kind of clips is this elevated lip that I have, because I'm trying to make it look not super thin. So these I'm changing out for the two meters and then doing ramps down to the four meters. I'm trying to incorporate the framework. Uh, I'm not sure how I'll do this one. Maybe I can fit this in. Somewhere along there. I don't want it to clip into the pipe. I'm trying to avoid that, but I do want this metallic looking framework everywhere I can. And then the way I had it over there is this just comes out the side and goes along. I'll have to do this one from the other side this way since it's not going to line up exactly right. This one is offset, but these are both offset to make room for the pipe. But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on this some more. I just wanted to bring you all in and let you see kind of my work in progress, let you know what my thoughts were as I'm doing this. And there it is, the oil rig. So this has been more than a day <laughs> of me working on this. And I didn't record it because I you know, wasn't able to, but I did get it finished. I have put a ton of work into this project, and I really hope it shows off. Uh, I'm going to walk you through it here in just a moment. But also, I'd like to go ahead and say thanks to everyone who's been watching my videos, liking my videos, commenting, and especially my new subscribers. The, uh, the love that I've been getting on this uh, series so far is absolutely amazing, and thank you for that. I really appreciate it. But now... Let's get down in here and take a look at this thing. Hopefully I don't take any damage. So this is all temporary right over here. And then obviously I intend to make a road network of some kind over here to get to this thing. Going so slow. But 
the oil comes up and goes in. We have a nice catwalk to get up here. And then the magic starts happening. So <laughs> I still have the crude oil buffer here. I've added in some additional signs to pretty things up. And I've got lights. Uh, you know, I really took inspiration from that uh, picture of an oil rig where things are very metal, very um, lots of frames, very open. And so as you come down through here, I tried to make sure that it really sticks in with everything. And there's lots of height changes, height variations in an oil rig. There, you know, platforms, walkways everywhere. So I tried to incorporate a lot of that. I think I did a pretty good job. So these right over here are all processing, uh, making plastic. <clears throat> all of the heavy oil residue goes underneath and runs along a pipe that you can see. I can, you can also see it from down below. And we'll go down there in a minute. All of the plastic comes up, runs down this line. I've got it, makes it looks like it's supported by the beams and then runs into our storage room which you can see right here. And then over there, I have all of the rubber being made and all of the heavy oil residue comes down and goes out. And everything makes its way into the storage room. Safety first, maybe. <laughs> you know, fix it's not as concerned about your safety as they are efficiency and productivity. Storage slash control room. So you come in here, I have two of these industrial containers. Each are filling up with their respective product. So right here you can see it says 80 per minute because that's what I currently produce with what I have coming in here. And that has 80 per minute. These are all set up to go out somewhere to a truck station or whatnot. In fact, I need to go ahead and grab a few of these because we are going to unlock some items Including our milestone here eventually but as you come up it's a pretty window you'll be able to see the road that I build um, up here is the main power switch so I can come in here main power comes in through the floor to this spot right here you can't tell very well it's actually inside of the machine and then it goes from here to all of the lights so I can control their intensity night mode change the colors if I'd like to and then it also goes out and to all of the different machines through that main power line. And I've tried to keep the power lines uh, running neatly and on the uh, framing, the metal framing that's around here. And there's a craft bench in here and you can come out and see what's going on. And the Fixmas event is in full swing now. It is December 1st when I'm recording this bit. Uh, yesterday when I was recording, I think they put parts of it in like these weren't decorated the presents were falling but the calendar wasn't there <laughs> I think that's fixed though I have been over and I've seen the calendar and a lot of things look different if you come out here we can take the high-rise catwalks around and take a look at things look it's a present right over there <laughs> so this is where the rubber is made I have four of these each producing 20 rubber per minute and the heavy oil residue same thing over here with the plastic you have 20 plastic per minute. This makes less heavy oil residue, which is good because at this point in time, as you saw down there, my sign says byproducts are down this way. Let me go down and we'll take the lower walk. I spent a lot of time working on it. Liquid gold. That's what oil is. But yes, down here, byproducts. And I set this up because we may eventually use the um, what is it that I'm making out of this? It's uh, like fake coal. <laughs> I forget what it's called exactly. We may use it for power in another setup later on, and I'll put the water extractors down underneath here. And I want you to be able to see through there. You come around here, and this is how I got the heavy oil from the outside of that line run across and over to the outside of the other line so that the machines can run. And I have cleverly gone underneath the ground here and linked up and then it comes back up over there to supply all the heavy oil residue 
to the other refineries. Up here we have a crafting bench. And you can see currently we're just sinking all of this material because it is essentially a byproduct this time. I need the rubber and I need the plastic. I don't need the other products. So I'm just turning it all into petroleum coke. That's what it's called. And taking that petroleum coke and sending it straight into the sink. Now, right now, due to the fact that my belts can only move 240 or 270, I have an extra sink sitting on a, a cheaty platform out there for this third one. <laughs> because the three of these combined is 360 per minute and I cannot move that amount into one sink. However, when I can upgrade the belts, I will get rid of that just kind of floating sink out there and make it look nice and neat and tidy. But that's what I have going on and it has allowed me to, as you saw, get lots of plastic and rubber built up, which is good because I want to get lots of trucks going. I want to not use the little bitty tractors, I want to use the trucks and have them running all over our world, transferring items. I will obviously get into trains eventually too, but right now I don't, I'm, I'm in no rush. I want to take my time and I want to play around with things. I do want to make a road with the new customizer materials asphalt foundation. I think that's going to look amazing. And I've got some ideas for decorating the road too with some kind of frames going over it and uh, some lights in order to make it look really nice and some signs and stuff and then I'm probably gonna try and incorporate a hyper tube system alongside the road network not sure we'll we'll look at that eventually however I do want to take you guys down below and show you where the heavy oil residue runs it's not very complicated it just comes underneath the platform these are all of the ones making the plastic it comes down and joins with the row that was making all of the uh, rubber and it all combines and goes back up over there neatly to get things operating and I've tried to make the underside look uh, reasonable too uh, with different height variations that could probably do with a different kind of ramp there let's fix that real fast while we're here already Foundations, inverted ramp. Okay, so probably have to put a one meter foundation above it. There we go. Hey, you never saw it. Now it looks great. <laughs> well, that's what I have going on down here. And like I said, this area will be for the water extractors. And don't look at my nasty platform for the temporary extra sink <laughs> so this is my oil rig which will allow us to really get moving into the trucks and build our trucking empire here on the map if you enjoyed today's video feel free to hit the like button i really do appreciate that and if you're new to my channel and you're enjoying my content and my creativity feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of this thank you all and as always i will see you all next time